the U.S. economy is the solid ground the president stands on when he trumpets his success, often calling it the best in the world. How nervous are administration officials about what happens if the economy starts to wobble? Well, Anna, it would be natural for them to be very nervous and as well as campaign staffers. Uh, we have to keep this in mind. The economy is always going to be on trial when it comes to a presidential election when there is an incumbent. So President Trump was always going to be judged by the economy. But particularly, this president has made it the central focus of all of his campaign. He's gone as far to say, uh, if you elect any Democrats, you'll never see this again, that I'm the one who created this. I'm the one who can do this. They'll take it away. The economy will crash afterwards. Uh, you have to stick with me. Obviously, Obviously, that all goes out the window if the economy crashes before the 2020 election. Uh, you have a couple of things going on here. First of all, you have uh, a seemingly strategy from the White House, which is deny, deny, deny. As you said, what recession? What is anyone talking about? We saw that uh, really all morning long with Peter Navarro, with Larry Kudlow, who came out to talk about this. They essentially denied that farmers were feel feeling the heat because of all of the tariffs. They denied that America was shouldering a lot of this trade war, despite the fact that there was in a report that came out uh, that said that actually 95% of those price changes were on the shoulders of U.S. Uh, investor. So it's not really a good situation when we hear from all of these uh, economic experts, but we're hearing from the Trump experts, uh, from the president himself, and they say there's nothing to see here. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, of course, again, back to 2020, they don't want there to be anything wrong. They want to look at the optimistic side of that. And the other thing uh, is that President Trump doesn't always believe the information that is being put in front of him. He believes that the economy is probably doing better than it is. Uh, he doesn't really pay attention to that. He thinks that his experts, that he knows best. So, Karen, if the president doesn't believe some of these economic experts and the warning signs because he, he thinks the data is being manipulated to make him look bad, are there concerns that the president may not take corrective actions? I think that is a concern that's out there. I mean, the president likes to point out the economic indicators that he believes work in his favor. And this last week, he's had to do some um, pirouetting to try to continue to do that because the stock market's been dropping, because you had that inverted yield curve in the bond market. And so his, his um, economic advisors are out right now saying it's not what it looks like. It's not even as bad as people are making it out to seem. But if this trend continues, it's going to be more and more difficult to argue that point, that maybe people are misinterpreting, or maybe this is just sort of a, a glitch because the economy is shifting to bring in, I, I believe one of his advisors said, more foreign capitals coming into the United States because of his policies. If you don't start to actually see that play out and the, the, and the, and the indicators end up becoming worse or more pronounced so that they can't be explained away as a blip, then we're going to start to see a little bit of uh, problematic effects, frankly, because look, we're, we're in a window right now where what people start to feel and, and how many voices start to explain these uh, the economy in a certain way matters in the next, what are we talking about, about 14 months before the election, 15 months before the election. And when you already have, you know, people in the agricultural sector saying they're starting to feel the effects of the trade war, where you already have people being concerned about what, what is this going to mean over the holiday season if this, the, the, the president's, you know, the trade policies continue this way, and the economic indicators in places where Trump always pointed to to say, look at what a good job I'm doing, even mm -hmm. if you don't have faith in what I'm trying to do, that could be a very, very difficult combination of uh, circumstances to explain their way out of. I mean, we do have low unemployment, wages are going up, there's strength in consumer spending, and even with those good economic numbers, the president is losing right now in head-to-head -head matchups with the top four Democrats in the most recent polling, as you see there. Tarini, is the Trump team in need of a recalibration? I think that's something that the team is probably talking about in terms of how they focus on talking about the economy. This is something that Democrats are increasingly focusing on. They know in order to win back the White House and especially those areas that uh, voted for President Obama and then voted for President Trump, talking about the economy is crucial. And the way they're doing it is pointing to the uncertainty with trade with China, uh, with the trade war that the president is, has been engaged in, and also pointing out that, you know, the president, when he talks about the economy, talks about the stock market. Uh, but, uh, you know, the way they talk about it on the campaign trail, they say, you know, uh, it's fine if you own stocks, but it's not really working. It might not be working for working class Americans. That's the message that Democrats are trying to point to when they are in Iowa or New Hampshire. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to see how the president tries to counter that, depending on um, what happens with the economy in the coming months. And that was a Fox News poll, by the way. And apparently the president is mad at his favorite network because of that poll. Listen to what he just said last hour. 
Fox has changed. And my worst polls have always been from Fox. There's something going on at Fox, I'll tell you right now. And I'm not happy with it. Fox was treated very badly by the Democrats. Very, very badly, having to do with the debates and other things. And I think Fox is making a big mistake because, you know, I'm the one that calls the shots on that, on the really big debates. I guess we're probably planning on three of them. And I, re well, I'm very, I'm not happy with Fox. I'm certainly happy, I think, Sean Hannity and Lou Dobbs and I think Tucker Carlson and Laura and uh, Jesse Waters and Janine. We have a lot of great people. Karen, did you catch that there? He said we when referring to Fox News. <laughs> Yeah, no, a few times, and I think I mean that just goes to look in the past when when and when uh, you know people have talked about uh, networks having having uh, their 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 guy out there in the political spectrum. You do you've seen politicians try to separate themselves from that and just saying, look, it's favorable coverage, and you should be doing more in the same. For him to be saying, you know, we're going to be doing this, I have say over what the debates are. It suggests a closer relationship, and 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 clearly we know the president watches a lot of Fox News and does feel personally invested in that and talks to a lot of the hosts that are on Fox News um, for you know the the for, for it, it, as he tries to see how various things he will do will play out um, in the general public. It seems like there's been various points of tension there, and maybe this is just him reasserting the "I'm with you guys, be with me" sort of um, assessment. Swin, you've written about some of the ways Fox News kowtows mm -hmm. to the president, like removing former Trump aide David Bossie from air because it upset the president, right? Oh, absolutely. And the important thing to know about not just Fox News, but sister network Fox Business, is that it's not just a bastion of um, information and propaganda and um, uh, um, entertainment for President Trump. It also houses some of his top informal policy and political advisors to his administration. People like Pete Hegseth and Lou Dobbs and Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram, they're not just people who talk to the president regularly over the phone or in private about messaging politics and his administration's policies, but uh, people like Pete Hegseth and Lou Dobbs, the president values their counsel enough that he has actually patched them in on speakerphone into Oval Office meetings with senior officials of his administration to talk about things like trade or immigration or what have you. And we reported at the Daily Beast several months ago that the president started telling um, uh, advisors working in his administration to, quote, keep an eye, end quote, on Fox because he started to notice certain um, um, moments of dissent bubbling up, or mm -hmm. what he perceived to be dissent, whether it was in a weekend host, or Shep Smith, or a straight news reporter at Fox. The slightest bit of what he sees as disloyalty from Fox, even though it could just come about within their normal news gathering process and not on a show like Laura Ingram's or Sean Hannity's, he views that as something to be crushed like a bug. And that's how he views Fox. And he feels like he's been so good to them, why aren't they always 150% good to him? Again, we're talking about the president, a man who is fighting multiple trade wars, negotiating with the Taliban in talks with North Korea, looking into buying Greenland, apparently, uh, and a back and forth with Iran right now. He's promising to cure childhood cancer. Tarini, how does he have time to concern himself with the coverage of a cable news network? I mean, this is who just just who President Trump is. He uh, is obsessed with watching cable news. We know he monitors it daily. He kind of sees it as um, a benchmark based on how uh, different political pundits and reporters are talking about his presidency. That's how he uh, views as sort of his um, the, the public commentary on his presidency as, you know, whether he's doing well or not. So he, he monitors it very closely. And um, it is, uh, you know, pretty stunning that he has a lot on his table. But, um, you know, at the same time, he is uh, watching cable news. And he just had a 10-day vacation time so in, in, at his golf club in New Jersey. So uh, I'm sure he had plenty of time then to watch uh, cable news even more so.